Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I'm actually sitting up unwinding and uh, there's this big news burst going on about Ja Morant uh, being suspended uh, and banned from all team activities pending a further investigation by the NBA uh, because another video surfaced with him in a vehicle with a gun. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with what's going on with this, uh, John Moran is a star um, point guard for the Memphis Grizzlies. And um, he's had a couple of issues over the last year, uh, a couple probably putting it mildly, where he's done some questionable stuff, uh, got into a fight with a teenager he was supposed to be mentoring, had him over his house shooting basketball, and they got into a disagreement, and he got into a fight, then went in the house and got a gun. Um, the biggest thing was he was in Denver playing a basketball game during the season, um, and after the game was in a club, and it was obvious he had a gun in the club, and um, he posted it on Instagram and it caught on, Lee got a wind of it. Uh, he was asked to step away for a couple of days, actually eventually ended up with an eight game suspension, uh, put his Nike deal, which is pretty nice and sweet, in jeopardy and a couple of other things. And then uh, today it so shows that another video with him with a gun in his hand, riding in a car in a passenger seat with someone. And that one actually showed up on someone else's Instagram account and obviously went viral and it made its way back to the NBA and his team has suspended him pending a future, uh, a further investigation by the league. They are anticipating a pretty substantial suspension, probably somewhere around 20, 25 games. I think that it may even be more as the league attempts to send a message about the brand um, and how they expect players to protect their brand. Uh, I want to give context to this because somebody hit me up and asked me about it. So instead of answering these questions individually, I'm going to just talk about this briefly. Okay, uh, before I do, I want to remind everybody, we don't forget we're in the middle of a uh, fundraiser this weekend. If you need to know more about it, if you need to know the depths of what we do, uh, I talked about it in depth in the video right before this one. Uh, go check it out. Um, um, look, first and foremost, I want to be very clear here. I'm not about giving passes. I'm not about uh, justifying poor behavior. John Morant, first and foremost, is not from the streets. He was reared in a two-parent household, had his dad parent present, um, and had a pretty good upbringing. His dad worked hard uh, and was you know, present. So he isn't gang-related. And if he is, it's because of something he got into after he got into the league, but he is not gang related. Um, there's no need for him to feel that way. Um, but again, he is a 23 year old. I remember being 23. Again, I'm not making any excuses. I'm giving context. What unfortunately Jai is experiencing is the age of social media. When I was 23, there wasn't no social media. If nobody didn't see it, it didn't happen. Uh, that's not the case here. Um, at 23, I had done a bunch of stupid stuff. Uh, my life changed as my kids came and I settled into my first marriage and realized I had a future in this world and that I was pissing it away with this mentality of toughness. Uh, I, wa I wasn't a menace in the sense I didn't bother anybody. I wasn't up robbing nobody. I was not, you know, doing anything. I just had this fuse and I, w I didn't like being violated or feeling violated or feel threatened or anybody coming at me or my family. And so I responded aggressively. 
Fortunately, I live to talk about it. In this instance, I don't even think it's a threat going on. And if it is, somebody needs to figure out why this kid from this background is in a position where he's threatened. Well, I can tell you one of the problems that Jai has. Jai hasn't learned yet the importance of the importance of having the right people around him, building a circle of people who are going to hold you accountable, building a circle of people who are going to um, make sure none of that bull crap is around you. Unfortunately, what's happening with Jai, Jai is that He's around the people who are actually bringing the drama, the people who are carrying the guns, the people who will My thing is, the first thing that I thought about, and this is the thing I don't want to forget to say in talking about this, is while everybody's going to crucify this kid, everybody's going to talk about how stupid he is, everybody's going to talk about what the hell's going on in his mind, questions that in, at some level have some legitimacy. But I think the first question we have to ask, and I don't think anybody's asked this question that I've seen talk about it in the media. Now, granted, the media is going to give it their own bend. The media is going to do what they can to sensationalize it and make sure that it's an issue uh, because it's going to get ratings. So you, the first thing you have to realize when you're watching this stuff on the media is the way that it's presented, it's presented in a way to get ratings because there is a logical and reasonable way to approach this where it is not as whoa, whoa, whoa. The first thing that should be said, the most reasonable thing that should be said is the first question, which I haven't seen asked yet, is when was this video shot? Now, if this video was shot before the last video was shot, then you know, you still need to say, okay, what's going on with this kid and these gu this kid and these guns? But he hasn't violated our warning. If he hasn't violated our warning, and this is something that happened prior to the warning and proper, proper prior to him saying he's going to get his stuff together, and he understands how important it is. Then this is a whole nother discussion, and I think that's what we should be looking at before we jump the gun. But see, there's no profit in the reasoning in this. The profit is in throwing a black kid out there. And making it seem like, the, and again, I don't want to make it seem like it's totally a racial issue, but this is an issue that is extremely deep in American uh, uh, inner city black culture uh, predominantly. Uh, and it's going to show up more. And it's not just blacks in inner city. However, it's predominantly blacks in NBA and the NFL. You're talking 70, almost 75% of the players in the NBA are black. So then you're going to have kids with that mentality coming. And the chances are when you have an issue like this is going to be black. The white kids who are in that situation, the Latino kids who are in situations where that might be an issue aren't normally going to end up in the NBA. So then, okay, obviously when it becomes an issue, it's a black issue when the truth of the matter is it's a cultural issue uh, based on environmental inner city culture. Again, I'm not making an excuse. He's definitely got to make better decisions. What I am saying is watch how it plays out. Uh, he happens to be in a league where the brand is extremely important. If it's the NFL, he's still going to be held accountable at a different level than whites. Cause let's go back and look at, let's look at domestic violence, uh, in the NFL, domestic violence, um, players were beating the hell out of their wives. Nobody was doing anything until the me too thing came along until there was some momentum and talk about the, the, the need to protect women, which I agree with 100%. I don't believe in a man putting his hand on a woman for any reason. Uh, so, I, I don't have a problem with strict rules and strict laws that govern and uh, defend against a man harming a woman. None at all. I don't have any problem with policies within sports that punish athletes, executives, or anything for doing something that harms a woman. I also believe in holding women accountable for their own behavior. I think everybody has a responsibility to carry themselves in a certain way. My issue isn't with that. My issue is if we look at uh, misogyny, uh, objectification, sexual 
uh, deviancy and violence towards black women. We've seen players like Ray Rice, uh, Kareem Hunt, and Deshaun Watson get major airplay for doing stupid shit, uh, get their th careers threatened. Ray Rice's career was totally destroyed. And the way he punched that girl, I don't have a problem with him getting suspended out of the league. I, I am a person that's real uh, conservative about taking a person's right to earn a living away because that's how they're going to feed their family through their whole future. Uh, obviously, from what I've been able to research and study about Ray and his wife, he actually ends up marrying this this woman. And the last I checked, they were still together. They were doing ministry together. It grew him up. And for that, I think everything that happened to him happened for a reason. But just sitting up saying, don't ever let him play again. Don't, I mean, like, now, if you do something criminal to a certain extent and it happens to you, it happens to you. Uh, but putting a hand on what the way he punched her, I can't argue against it. I, I want to sit up and say, man, you know, but it's just certain things. I feel now, again, this is principle with me. I'm real big on you know, our women being protected. And so that was a black woman being hit by a black man. Got a problem. Okay. Deshaun Watson obviously had an issue. The league, the team knew about it. I'm almost certain somebody else in the league knew about it. And it wasn't a problem until he no longer wanted to play for the Texans. And then all of a sudden this stuff gets leaked and it's real big and they're settling uh, claims. The Texans actually pay their suit off and he ends up, uh, not playing a year then when he does come back, he ends up suspended for 12 games. It's just a whole bunch of other stuff. Then Bill Roethlisberger gets two separate rape accounts and settles them. Not does not miss one, does not miss one game. Um, the kicker, I want to say for Buffalo, I could be wrong, has seven domestic violence, uh, claims against him back like three or four years ago, never missed or suspended for one game. That's the kind of problems I have when there is a different standard by which uh, people are going to be measured in this. Now, again, this isn't, the NBA is simply a microcosm of how things are inside of the the world in general, the world at large. Because if you remember Brock Turner, the white boy who got caught um, raping an unconscious female on side of a dumpster, found guilty by a jury, but sentenced to only 90 days in jail, not prison, 90 days in jail by a judge who said he didn't want to sentence him to prison because prison would be a negative, impact him negatively. Well, prison impacts everybody negative negatively people who have done far less that don't look like him have ended up in prison and had to deal with the implications and the ramifications and consequences of going to prison but this judge saw that hey this is a young white kid he's in college at a ivy league school i believe it was stanford and you know i don't want to ruin his life well, kids get their lives ruined. Uh, and I'm all for giving a kid a second chance at a young age, but he was raping an unconscious woman. We're not talking about somebody gets caught stealing. Uh, somebody gets into a fight and uh, maybe somebody gets hurt a little bit. This is somebody raping an unconscious female. And so I have a problem with it, but obviously the, the system didn't. That That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. There is a double standard. Um, uh, my suggestion with this whole jaw thing is number one, his dad needs to stop trying to be his friend and start parenting again. And I think that's one of the things that I think we as a people need to stop doing is thinking because our kids are 21, that they are grown. They are adults legally grown comes with a level of maturity, responsibility, an ability to navigate society successfully that comes with time. It, everybody doesn't grow up at the same time. You need to be parenting your kids throughout their life in different ways as they grow older, as they mature. Your parenting changes, but you're always a parent. And I think that's what uh, T. Morant, Jai's dad, kind of got aside, hey man, his, you know, it, 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 it's easy to see how it happens though. T. Moran is the breadwinner in the home. 
He's 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 Jah's father. He's the breadwinner at home. He takes care of the family. He trains his son. He works out with his son. He prepares his son. And all of a sudden, his son is now the breadwinner. His son is now buying him a home. His son is now uh, the person with the money. And because we commodify black men, because everything that uh, black men and culture in general tend to rest itself on in determining whether someone is a man is how much money they make, how many bills they can pay. Well, now that this kid can pay all the bills, he's given a pass. No, he needs a father that sit up and say, dude, reel it in. And I think that somebody needs to sit down with him, somebody that he really truly respects and tell him that he can't continuously go. I know they may be your boys, they may be your friends, but the circle that you have, the company that you're keeping is going to sink you. Now, um, the question is, will Nike uh, tank uh, or rescind their uh, endorsement deal with him? Because that's a sweet little piece of money. Uh, he just signed a five-year, $200-something million dollar deal that kicks in next season. And he's going to start the season out missing maybe 20 games. Now, that is, if we're talking about responsibility, I know it's sports, but to it, it's his life. It's his way of making a living. So it's not just sports. This is life. It's sports to me because if if it's, if it happens or not, it doesn't change my reality. But that's how he's out. That's how he has a capacity. That's his leverage pen to create wealth for his family and the future uh, of his family. And he's playing loosely with it. Uh, he says he understands the gravity of it. But again, I can't judge him on this latest video because I don't know when the video was shot. Uh, and I think that it's foolish to make the assumption that this is a new video after he clearly uh to me seemed to have changed his 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 uh his his behavior uh after that last thing i think that kind of shook him so I, i'm interested in finding out when that video was taken but i'm also um willing to say sit and wait but Regardless, that's still another incident with you videotaping yourself with a gun, which in and of itself is stupid. Even if having a gun is legal in a particular place, that's just silly. That's just bringing unwanted attention to you. That's sitting up playing into a narrative and a stereotype. That's sitting up doing something that you have no business doing, no need to do. When I was out and I was at the top of my game and I was doing what I doing, was doing, I had security. I had a bodyguard. I didn't have a need to sit around, go around waving, waving a gun around. That's just not smart. That's asking for trouble. That's also putting a target on your back because now any disagreements you have with someone, uh, they're going to automatically make the assumption that you're carrying and they're going to want to act, pull and shoot first just unnecessary stupid behavior um again all of us have been there uh may not be guns but it's something we we had to grow up the difference is uh, most of us are definitely my age didn't have to grow up with uh everybody being able to see what i'm doing uh, if social media was going back then, goodness. Uh, but thank God it wasn't. It allowed me to grow up. Uh, social media doesn't give you that pass. Social media uh, and these devices that record every freaking thing that you do puts you on front street. And the bigger you are, the more gravity it gets and the more likes it gets. Now you got boy, your boys who are supposed to be having your back trying to get likes and exposure on their accounts, sharing stuff that you had with you that you thought was just between you and them. Now it's going up and it's costing you. It's going to go in your pocket. It's, it's going to impact you. 
it, at some point, if it doesn't stop, it's going to ruin your career and end your opportunity to do what you love doing and get paid a whole lot of money to do it and put you in a situation where you can make sure that your kids never even know anything close to lack and neither will their kids if you play it right. But you got to start on the front end managing your opportunity. That's a responsibility that's on him. So, look. Uh, my thing is, uh, it's easy to sensationalize this, and that's what the media gets paid to do, is to create ratings. Uh, I think they're jumping the gun on it. Uh, now, if it turns out that this is a new video and he's done it, obviously he does need to sit down. He needs to sit down. And, and one of the things I'm never going to have a problem with is consequences for poor behavior. Because when we don't give our children consequences, they think they can consistently do anything and there's no negative thing in life isn't that way. The world isn't that way. The system isn't that way. And if you get out here thinking that nothing bad can happen from you doing bad things, you really end up with your back pent. And if you're lucky, you survive, but you will definitely take hard hits that you don't necessarily have to take. So my thing is, if he actually shot another video since the one in Denver that got him in trouble the first time, he needs to sit down. He needs to really sit down and think about this, but he needs to get real help. That little few days he spent in some little clinic in Florida, again, PR. That was all about PR. That's to say, I went and got me some help. That's to kind of clean it up and, 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 and uh, inoculate it and sterilize it a little bit. But at the end of the day, that's not enough time to really work on the things that are going on in your mind that makes you think that doing that is a wise thing to do when you have so much at stake. You have to ask yourself, when I have this much at stake, what would make me want to do something as foolish as this, which can totally take all of this away from me in a heartbeat? That is the question that needs to be asked. That's the discussion that needs to be had. That's the things that need to be hashed out in his mind. I'm going to keep him lifted in prayer. I'm wishing the best for him. Uh, it seems like a good kid. He's just wound a little different and he has the wrong people around him. Uh, there is um, a scripture. I want to say 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Um, and it's writ obviously Corinthians is, is a, a letter written by, written to the church in Corinth by Paul. Uh, but it is a quote from the Greek philosopher Euripides. And it says, do not be deceived. Good company is corrupted. I mean, bad company corrupts good habits. Do not be deceived. Bad company cor corrupts good habits. When I was in high school, uh, my 11th grade teacher who saw a lot of promise in me and just stalked me. She actually met me when I was in the ninth grade and she just kept up with me until she, she actually requested for me to be in her class. And, and, uh, something she would, would catch me. She caught me in the hall, hanging with the wrong boys. Come here. What are you doing him? Oh, that's my friend. No, no, no. She would say, son, association brings about assimilation. She said, you hang around somebody long enough, you start to behave like them. You start to pick up their habits. You start to do things that they do. You don't need to be around anyone who doesn't have the habits of success, the habits of high character and standards. You have too much promise. Don't let me see you with him again. And that's the conversation that someone needs to have with Ja. Uh, well, that's, that's all. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, again, I think the first question, at least that I haven't seen answered and I tried to find it and I wasn't able to, the question that hasn't been answered, I don't think anyone even knows now because it's so new, is when was this video taken? Uh, and if the video was taken before the last video, you just got to chalk that up. We obviously know he was doing crazy stuff. So we can't just keep going back in his past and digging up stuff and saying, we found some more stuff. We're going to punish you for it. No, we found some stuff. We said, we need you to change your uh, behavior. We need you to be focused and understand what's at stake here. And he says, I understand what's at stake. And if he hasn't done anything since then, I think that it is what it is. Just some more evidence of where he was at the time. And it needs to be chalked up and put out. But somebody needs to ask him, hey, why are you in that space where you feel like you need to be running around flashing guns on camera? You know, 
And again, he's 23 years old. And for a lot of us, it's been so long since we were that age, it's hard to realize just how wired dumb we were. Uh, but I remember, and I'm just grateful that, I, first of all, I'm still alive. Second of all, I'm not serving a life sentence. And that I was able to really straighten my head and do something special and good with my life. And that's what I would like to see with him and a bunch of other kids out there with promise. And I think whether you can dribble a basketball or not, you have promise. And that's what I want to see. So I'm about to get ready to get off here. But again, uh, as I said at the beginning, don't forget we are in the fundraising phase, boosting phase. We're really trying to get some things done. If you need to know more about it, go check it out on the video before this one. And um, it, it, it lays it all out, the work we're doing, the, the situations we're in, the threats we're facing. Uh, there's so much going on and we're so far behind the eight ball that it is scary. And everybody just seems to be moving along, not understanding the gravity of the moment and the long reaching ramifications of not getting our stuff together. So again, uh, look in the description box and show some love and support the work we're doing. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for listening.